Hi, my name is David Anderson. I'm an Associate Professor of United States Politics at Durham University. And today we're going to talk about some recent current events and developments in American politics, focusing on what's happened from the middle of 2022 up through the first quarter of 2023. I'm going to start today by talking about perhaps the biggest development in the Supreme Court and constitutional law in the last 50 years in the United States. And that, of course, is the Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization decision that came out in June of 2022. Now, Dobbs was a monumental case, and that is because it struck down two pillars of constitutional law that the United States has relied on for about 50 years now. And that was Roe v. Wade, which was handed down in 1973, and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, which came down in 1992. And these two decisions cemented the right to abortion in American politics and government. So the issue of abortion has been a hot political topic in the United States for well over 50 years. But it's important to realize that abortion is not actually the central issue here. It's sex and sexuality. The United States kind of stands alone in that it is a very rigid country in regulating sex and sexuality. And it has a long history of passing legislation that tells people who they're allowed to love and how they're allowed to love them. Now the time that Roe v. Wade was handed down as a Supreme Court decision, there was a lot of action in loosening up these restrictions in the United States. It started largely in the 1960s. In 1965, there was a very important decision that for the first time said, married couples in the United States had a right to access birth control. Before 1965, almost every state in the United States said that it was criminal to use birth control to prevent a pregnancy from happening. Now that was only for married couples and it took another five years before this right was extended to unmarried couples. About the same time, the court looked at laws that restricted the racial categories of people who could get married. It was illegal in the United States for a white person to marry a non-white person for a very long time. And that was only struck down in 1967. So the abortion decision that came with Roe v. Wade was the last of a series of decisions that opened up the right to sex and sexuality in the United States. So Roe v. Wade, what it did is it created a legal standard in the United States that stood for 50 years. And what that standard said was not that abortion was always going to be legal. What it did is it restricted the ability of the states to restrict abortion. It said that in the first trimester of a woman's pregnancy, she had the full rights to decide what to do with that pregnancy, including terminate it. In the third trimester, when the court decided that a fetus was viable, that is, could live outside of the womb, the state had priority and could criminalize and ban abortion. But the gray area was in the second trimester, when the court was unsure about whether viability existed. In this area, states had some area to restrict abortion, but not total. And this is where the conversation was for 50 years. So what happened? Well, what happened is largely the politicization of the American court system. Now, the American court system has always been politicized. And presidents, of course, have the ability to appoint justices onto the Supreme Court, subject to the ratification of the Senate. And this has always been a political process. But starting in the 1980s, this became much more apparent to the public. In the 1980s, for the first time, the Senate seemed poised to strike down a presidential nominee for the Supreme Court. And once that happened, the public started paying attention, and the justices started becoming more political in nature. Over time, this ramped up, and in the modern era, the Supreme Court is a clearly, nakedly political body. This is epitomized over what happened during the Obama presidency under the Senate leadership of Mitch McConnell. What Mitch McConnell aimed to do was correct what he saw as an overly liberal Supreme Court system. And he did this by withholding the nominations of President Obama's political appointments to the Supreme Court. Most famously, when Justice Antonin Scalia passed away just 10 months before a presidential election, Senator McConnell said he would not hold hearings on Obama's appointee to the Supreme Court, Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland never even got a hearing to become the next Supreme Court Justice. Instead, 
Mitch McConnell held that appointment open for the next president, hoping that a Republican would win the 2016 presidential election. Of course, that happened. President Trump went on to win the presidential election in 2016 and appointed a new member to the bench. Over the next four years, President Trump was able to appoint two more Supreme Court justices. The last one, Amy Comey Barrett, was appointed just a month before the next presidential election. McConnell's tactic of withholding a nomination hearing for Obama's appointment and granting one to Trump's appointment allowed the conservatives in the Republican Party to seize control of the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court has always been a political body. The difference is that today, the public is very much aware of it. So what's the significance of the Dobbs decision? Yes, abortion is no longer protected as a civil right in the United States, at least not fully. But what happens next is actually politics. Um, the first thing is the public is going to have to form a solid opinion on it. And we are very unsure of what the public is going to think about abortion in the coming years. We know that before Roe v. Wade came down as a decision, more than 60% of the American population wanted abortion to be legalized. And a smaller minority, about 30%, wanted it criminalized. After Roe v. Wade, though, the people who supported availability of abortion kind of stood down. They'd won the battle. They didn't feel the need to fight very hard anymore. So their voices went away. The pro-life segment of America who wanted to see abortion criminalized again, well, they stood up. And it took them 50 years to cast down Roe v. Wade. It's an open question whether abortion is going to continue to be a hot button issue in the United States. If it is, and if public opinion polling is correct, and public opinion polling currently shows that 60 to 75% of Americans want abortion legal in some way or another, this could be a monumental issue in American politics. And we do have some indications of it. In the 2022 midterms, all of the political expectations was for a red wave, that the Republican Party would sweep into Congress, likely take the House and the Senate, potentially by large margins. This didn't happen. Instead, the Democratic Party held on to the Senate and only lost the House by a few seats. Some of this has to be explained by the Dobbs decision. If abortion continues to help the Democratic Party in this way, it's going to be very challenging for the Republican Party to hold on to power. Another big area where the Dobbs decision is likely to be influential is what we're seeing happening across the states right now. And this is federalism. Federalism is the principle where the federal government has control of certain things and the states have control of certain other things. Right now, abortion is no longer federally protected by the Supreme Court decision Roe v. Wade. So the states are free to legislate on it. And what we've seen is a rush of movement at the state level to criminalize abortion. Now, it's not happening everywhere. There are lots of Democratic-held states that are protecting abortion. But in the red states that are criminalizing and thus changing their laws, there's a big expectation that this will have political ramifications. We don't know what those ramifications will be yet, but it's the thing to watch right now across the United States.